welcome everyone to uh, uh, GIFA's webinar on uh, financing energy, land, and water conservation projects. Today we'll hear from Jason Bodwell, who is GIFA's Senior Program Manager, as well as Fuller Callaway, who is GIFA's Land Conservation Program Manager. Following their brief presentation, we'll take questions uh, via the, uh, uh, the chat or questions uh, uh, box on the, uh, the GoToWebinar screen. And at this time, I will now turn the program over to Jason Bodwell. Thank you, Shane. Uh, morning, everybody. This is Jason Bodwell. I'm a senior program manager here at GIFA. Uh, for those on the phone, most people are probably familiar with GIFA, but if you're not, uh, the Georgia Environmental Finance Authority, um, the Water Resources Division, is uh, an entity which provides financing to uh, municipalities for a variety of infrastructure projects centered around uh, water, sewer, and landfills. Uh, our bread and butter approach at GIFA is to provide funding for uh, maintenance, uh, expansion projects, uh, growth projects, but recently we wanted to expand uh, what GIFA lends for into uh, conservation oriented projects um, centered around water conservation, energy conservation, and, and land conservation. So we want to dip in just real quickly to um, discuss those three areas of uh, water conservation, energy conservation, and, and land conservation. We're, uh, there we go. Um, in our promotion of these three concepts, I'll center on uh, water conservation and energy conservation and then pass it over to Fully, Fuller Callaway to talk about land conservation. But right up front, we wanted to talk about the fact that we lower our interest rates across all of our programs a full one percentage base uh, percent uh, for any type of conservation-oriented project. Whether the project is borrowing funds through our federal loan programs or our state loan programs, um, we will lower the interest rate by a full percentage point. From the water conservation standpoint, there are uh, a few project types that we can discuss uh, real briefly, kind of hitting the high level. Here, here's a schematic on your screen of uh, what we have put together uh, with respect to water conservation projects. Uh, this is pulled out of a water conservation white paper that we have on our website where we have identified all of the water conservation activities that we see a local government could perform at the local level. Uh, we are by no means uh, water and sewer system operators, nor are we a group of engineers at GIFA, so we couldn't possibly conceive of all the water conservation activities that could be undertaken at a utility, but this is a smattering of what we see as potential water conservation activities out there which would be eligible uh, for water conservation loans and thus eligible for this one percentage point uh, rate reduction. So projects that stem around water loss with respect to auditing or, or leak detection, leak repair, line replacement, pressure management, and certainly the installation of water meters, whether they be uh, installing water meters in unmetered areas or water meters installed to replace old and uh, poorly functioning water meters. So anything to deal with water loss centered around a water real loss or apparent loss uh, could be eligible under this program for the reduced rate. Uh, many communities ask us, um, can we fund water loss studies that result in water loss projects? That is certainly an eligible activity where we would fund the upfront study to determine where the water loss exists and then roll into an actual capital improvement project that fixes the problem identified in those studies. So again, any real loss or apparent loss type activities. Uh, moving down toward the bottom of the screen, the end use efficiency in, in conservation. There are certainly activities um, to be done from the end user standpoint uh, with respect to sub-metering um, government-owned housing projects or installing high efficiency fixtures in uh, government-owned buildings or uh, high-efficiency fixtures at the residential or commercial level, such as a toilet rebate program or a showerhead rebate program or a variety of different rebate programs that could be initiated at the local level, um, but where the work is done uh, for commercial or residential customers. 
So again, as far as water conservation, we encourage communities to bring their water conservation ideas to us. Um, we have put forth these ideas, but there are certainly more out there that the communities can, uh, um, can pitch to us and we would consider. Uh, many projects are not fully water conservation eligible. Uh, for example, if your community needs to do a, a water tank coupled with a water meter replacement project, a portion of that would be eligible for the rate reduction and a portion would not. Uh, we would work with the community to determine what the mix of eligible and non-eligible project is and come up with a blended rate. So, for example, we could possibly reduce that rate rather than a whole percentage point, we could reduce that rate by um, 75 basis points or, or something in that nature based on the makeup of the uh, uh, water conservation eligible, non-water conservation eligible type activities. <clears throat> Now moving forward to uh, energy production, energy pr production is a little bit more expansive than water, uh, I'm sorry, energy conservation is a little bit more uh, expansive than water conservation. Uh, energy conservation can really take on a variety of different forms. Uh, we've got a, another schematic on the screen. We really break up energy conservation into three buckets with respect to energy production projects, energy conservation projects, and energy management and planning. Uh, energy management and planning is similar to a, a water loss study. Uh, we would certainly fund a study where you can determine energy uh, management activities at the local level centered around water and sewer. If your utility is a high energy user and you want to do an energy management study to identify areas where you can save electricity with respect to uh, different process changes or lighting retrofits or um, uh, motor and pump replacement, those are studies we would certainly fund in anticipation where that study would result in an actual capital improvement project. Now, moving forward and kind of uh, diving a little deeper into uh, energy conservation, we've got another schematic up on the screen. And again, this is uh, from our energy conservation white paper on our website where we talk about different energy conservation activities that we see communities could undertake centered around water and sewer utilities. Again, GFA's bread and butter here is focused on water and sewer uh, infrastructure type projects. So energy conservation projects centered around wastewater collection, anything to do with uh, inflow and infiltration um, um, correction type projects or inflow and infiltration detection equipment, Anytime you're correcting inflow and infiltration issues, you're certainly reducing energy consumption with respect to um, pumping excess water that is leaking into the sewer lines and then certainly treating um, rainwater that is unnecessarily treated by the plant. All those would result in uh, uh, extra energy usage, thus fixing those I, &I problems would be considered an energy conservation activity with the wastewater collection system. Uh, moving on to water and wastewater treatment facility, there's certainly a variety of energy conservation activities from uh, pump replacement uh, to more energy efficient products to lighting, SCADA, uh, uh, variable frequency drives, all kinds of different um, projects could be conceived where energy could be saved. Uh, down at the bottom, the movement from aerobic to anaerobic digestion certainly would be a significant energy saving type project. Um, again, like water conservation, many of these projects, the entire project itself might not be energy conservation, so we would work with the community to find that, that blended rate scenario where we could um, mix the non-energy conservation with the energy conservation and, and lower that interest rate for the community. Now moving on to energy production side, uh, there are a variety of energy production type projects that communities could undertake at their water or wastewater treatment facility or even landfills. GFA does provide funding for landfills, and many of us know that there are some great energy production opportunities with respect to landfills. So the schematic here shows um, really probably what we're mo most focused on are uh, solar installations tied to landfills, water, or sewer treatment facilities, or methane gas collection projects centered on uh, landfills, water, or sewer treatment facilities. These are probably the most prevalent water, uh, excuse me, energy production type projects, but we would certainly entertain uh, wind projects, geothermal, or, or microhydro projects um, as well. 
the key to some of these energy production projects is um, the facilities um, that benefit or are benefited from the project. Um, some of the en uh, eligible facilities are here up on the screen. Um, again, water and sewer treatment facilities are really the main primary focus of this program, uh, but landfills and MSWs can certainly um, install a methane gas collection project, a solar project, a wind project, or some other energy production project as well. Again, the key here is um, focused on the uh, water and sewer or landfill utility. Uh, we cannot do these projects that are connected to uh, schools or churches or city halls or any area that is not focused on the water, sewer, or landfill. <clears throat> I get asked often about um, the different structures. Uh, we all know that solar is a, a booming industry in Georgia, and many communities want to know how these programs can, excuse me, how these projects can be structured. So the, the matrix on the screen kind of digs a little deeper into how the uh, projects can be structured. You've got three out of four different opportunities as we see it. You've got uh, the project located on site, and by on site I mean on the property of the water or the sewer treatment facility or landfill, and the power being produced is directly used by that facility up in the top left box, certainly an eligible activity. Moving to the right on the top right box, another eligible activity is those that are located off site but that power is still directly used by the facility. An example here would be if the water or sewer utility does not have the space to locate a energy production project, but there is, for example, a brownfield on the other side of town or adjacent to the facility, um, the energy production project could be located off-site at that brownfield, and then if it makes economic sense, the electricity or power production pump back to use at the facility itself. Uh, moving on to uh, uh, different scenarios in the bottom, the bottom left, um, again that project is located on site but instead of using the power directly at the facility that power is sold back directly to the grid. If it makes economic sense in some scenarios you could potentially use rather than using the um, the power on site you could sell that power back to the grid. And then lastly, the area that the um, situation that is ineligible would be the bottom right where you've got an off-site situation sold back to the grid. That's like I said before, the example of a school or a church or the city hall where the, the um, installation is located off-site but the power is sold back to the grid. There's no benefit there directly to the water, the sewer, or the landfill, so that would be an ineligible activity. Uh, we're getting a tremendous amount of interest on these energy production projects. Uh, we're working on a case study now of our first one we did up in the, the Chatsworth area in North Georgia. Uh, it was a two and a half million dollar project with some grant funds to construct a, a one megawatt solar installation. Here's a, a, an aerial view of the uh, solar installation prior to its installation and you can see that the solar uh, panel uh, array feeds not only the main office of the sewer treatment plant, uh, but also the tr sewer treatment plant itself. We're very proud of that project, and we hope to do uh, many, many more of them throughout the state as we continue with this program. And then lastly, uh, another good case study of energy production is the city of Atlanta embarked on a project several years ago, a methane gas collection project off of their digester at their Arm Clayton uh, sewer plant. Very successful project. This project could be replicated at many, many installations or utilities across the state. Fairly simple project to collect that methane uh, digester gas, to burn it, turn a turbine, produce electricity, and uh, service of, uh, of a certain amount of electricity at the large RM Clayton facility. So again, a uh, variety of water and conservation and energy conservation and production activities. We'd encourage communities to think outside the box to bring these projects to us. Uh, we like to fund these. These are great projects um, for communities. So uh, we encourage you to, to bring the, your, your projects to us. Uh, I'm going to pass it off to uh, Mr. Fuller Calloway, who's going to talk about our third conservation piece, our, our land conservation activities. Thank you, Jason. Um, the, I'm going to talk to you all today about the Georgia Land Conservation Program. Similar to our Water Resources Division in GFA, the, the Georgia Land Conservation Program 
does a lot of things and has a lot of activities that we manage and monitor. Uh, the, the presentation today is going to be mainly focused on a high level aspect of what our land conservation program or revolving loan fund does and what type of projects are eligible through our land conservation revolving loan fund. Uh, in addition to this, just to mention, we also do administer the Georgia Land Conservation Tax Credit Program, um, and we also do also have grant programs that are available as well. The, the Georgia Land Conservation Program was started in 2005 by Governor Purdue with a focus on really protecting Georgia's conservation assets uh, in, in a wide array, that being agriculture, forest land, cultural historic sites, recreation areas that work on fostering ecosystems and promote a high quality of life for current and future generations in Georgia. The Land Conservation Loan Revolving Fund, so far since its inception, has protected about 335,000 acres of land. Uh, the main focus of this revolving loan fund is to focus on projects that have an impact on non-point source pollution reduction. And we look at this, as you'll see in a minute, um, and all of the different eligible activities that we can loan for, for conservation projects, we really want to see a non-point source pollution uh, solution or aspect to the projects. <clears throat> the land conservation program was set up to be very um, involved, to be, to be very kind of wide range in the types of projects that the program can fund the water quality protection, uh, flood protection, wetlands protection, erosion, uh, forestry lands, cultural resources, recreation areas, projects that provide connectivity to other areas that are in conservation. Um, so all of these are eligible conservation purposes. A project that either the borrower, either a municipality or an NGO are bringing to us as a project does not have to have all of these elements in the project, but we do favor those that have multiple uh, conservation purposes in the project. And like I mentioned earlier, the, the main focus being that the project will include a non-point source pollution activity to help reduce to help reduce non-point source pollution. The, I, I think I just touched on it briefly, but I wanted to go back and, and similar to our other programs at GFA, our eligible borrowers for this are cities and counties, um, any entity that was created by the state legislature, and then also nonprofit organizations or NGOs. That, so that's a little bit different than our typical loan program through our through the Georgia Environmental Finance Authority because we do allow nonprofits to partner with us on projects and receive loans for these types of projects. The Land Conservation Re Revolving Loan Fund again was created in 2006 and it was funded with 55 million dollars from our Clean Water SRF. Since 2006 we have awarded 35 million dollars in projects and projects and have reinvested the repayments into the revolving fund so that it continually is growing. Uh, the, lo the loan revolving fund so far by itself has protected about 35,000 acres of property and we are continuing to grow that amount daily. This is a list of the current types of projects mm -hmm. that we embark on or, or that we typically do. Uh, by no means is it the only types of projects that we do, but it's the most typical types of projects that we do. Uh, I'm going to go through in the next few minutes some examples of these fee title 
projects, conservation easement projects and bridge loans projects. And to give you all a few examples of what types of projects we're looking for and traditionally fund through this, um, to, to mirror what Jason said earlier, that this is just projects that, that we have routinely done. By no means is it the end all be all of projects that we will fund and we are open to suggestions and ideas that you all have to as to future projects that we could fund through the program. The fee title program is typically we have lent, used these projects to give loans to cities and counties or NGOs that want to acquire the land outright. Uh, examples of these types of projects have been cities that want to create uh, parks within their urban areas or suburban areas, cities and or counties that want to create passive recreation trails and green spaces, and that can be along riverways or also along old railroad corridors, uh, really any areas where the, the city or the community sees the opportunity to create connectivity through green spaces and recreation trails. Buffer acquisitions along riparian areas and access areas. This can be really important for cities that are communities that are creating blue way projects and are trying to find additional access areas where they can connect more of these to allow for access. Uh, that, that's absolutely an eligible project that we would entertain. Source water protection projects. We're working on a couple of these now and Really what this entails is a community wanting to do land conservation protection around their drinking water, source water protection area. Uh, so identifying what, where the community receives their water and going out and buffering those and creating working forests around those, those source water protection areas and also around groundwater recharge areas that are important for the communities. Community forest projects is a, is a newer idea that we are working on right now. And the idea is to build actively, not actively managed forests, but forests that really meet what an individual's community uh, needs are. And so, so this is, can be as large as several thousand acres of a forest to, to as small as, you know, uh, a smaller project that is right outside the boundary or within a boundary of a community. The second type of project that we typically loan for are for cities and counties or non-GO or NGOs, land trusts typically, that want to buy land but do not want to own it. And they do this through the use of a conservation easement. So we allow cities or counties or NGOs to, to purchase conservation easements, to buy conservation easements from willing landowners to dictate how that land will be used in the future. Um, the e eligible entities to hold conservation easements uh, can be the communities themselves. It's typically land trust or state agencies that will end up holding and monitoring those conservation easements. and. Very, very similar project types as to projects that we typically do these for for Fee Simple. And uh, the, probably with the other exceptions being forest land or agricultural land, communities or NGOs that want to actively protect working forests and working agricultural lands in the community. Uh, what, one thing to mention is that uh, and this is through our grant program, but we do allow for projects that are going to either be in fee simple or have conservation easements that are held by state agencies, typically the Georgia Forestry Commission or the Department of Natural Resources, uh, that to reimburse the community for the due diligence costs that are associated with that project. The final type of project that we typically lend to are conservation bridge loans. Uh, th this, our experience has been this has been more typical for an NGO or land trust 
that is buying property while a third party, whether it's a, a state or a federal agency, uh, works to purchase that property. And, and this is typically we see along areas that the department and the state, the Department of Natural Resources in the state of Georgia have defined it in the state wildlife action plan as high priority habitat areas, lo lo much larger acquisition projects, and large buffer acquisitions along major riparian areas. The following is a map of all the conservation lands that we, we were able to identify, the state's been able to identify. Uh, it's a little bit outdated. Th this map is from 2013, and it does not include all of the private conservation easements that exist in the state. But the idea of kind of showing this map is, is really for probably the last, the last slide on bridge loans and also looking at high priority habitats. Uh, in the northeast corner of the state, as long as the south along the coast, you all, uh, it's, you can see kind of where large conservation areas have begun to be acquired by state and federal agencies. And so if there are projects within these areas that fall within the scope of what you're wanting to do, that those could be appropriate areas for bridge loans. The or conservation easements. Uh, the rest of the state is also very appropriate for conservation easements uh, and fee simple acquisitions for cities and counties. And so this is not a list of all the projects that we've done, but just a list of projects that are have been done in the state up to date. The following slide, this is a li list of our current interest rates and the the projects or the programs that are highlighted in yellow are the pro pro programs that we have discussed today are Georgia Fund loans for water and energy conservation or water first communities are outlined with 1% or 100 basis points reduction. Our clean water SRF loan, which Jason was discussing earlier for water and energy conservation or water first communities our clean water SRF land conservation loans, and our drinking water SRF water and energy conservation funds. So as you can see, these rates are subject to change, um, but all projects that are submitted within the next few months uh, will be, th these rates will be uh, the, the interest rates for those projects. And on the left corner, or excuse me, the right corner of the, of the, um, diagram or table also indicates the the maximum amount that is available per project. If you have any additional questions, my contact information is on the right of the screen. And I also recommend you uh, look at the Georgia Land Conservation Program website. There is a lot more additional information regarding land conservation programs. And I'll I'll pass it back over to Jason and Shane. I appreciate it, uh, Jason and Fuller, uh, for taking us through those slides. We're going to try to take a few questions now via the chat feature uh, here in the GoToWebinar uh, program. If there are any questions uh, that folks have, uh, you can. Uh, we'll give you a few minutes to uh, to submit those. If you'd like to submit questions offline. Uh, that's certainly uh, an option too. We have uh, Jason and Fuller's uh, contact information there on your screen. Uh, you can also submit uh, questions or you know technical feedback about the webinar or suggestions for future webinars to uh, public affairs at gfa.ga.gov, or you can also call us at 404-584-1000.